Windows has a lot of problems, but when you get a Microsoft laptop, it's easy to see how the alternative wouldn't be any better. I mean, it is, but after lots of messing around, and that's the same on lots of other laptops too. If you want to see the specific problems I'm talking about, you can go through the chapters below. It was ages ago that PC users got introduced to fancy touching, whether that be full-on touchscreens or just trackpads but with cool gestures. Despite that though, probably thanks to desktop touchscreens not really taking off, despite the fact that some people swear by it on laptops, bonus points for a stylus, Linux support has not been great. As an example, here's GNOME on X, the way things used to be. The stylus actually does work, even with pressure support and everything, but if I try and scroll through a browser, it just selects the text under me like I'm clicking and dragging with a mouse, and trackpad gestures don't work. Now, for GNOME itself, you can get an extension that brings the trackpad gestures back for the GNOME desktop environment itself, but you won't get proper scrolling with the touchscreen, and you still won't be able to swipe back and forward in Firefox or anything like that. And that makes sense if you think about it. In a way, it's like X was built in a different computing landscape where those requirements weren't really something that the developers probably thought much about. If only there was a more modern replacement. Wayland. Yep, as all of you still on X probably hate hearing by now, you should probably switch to Wayland, especially on a laptop and you want touch gestures and, and things like that, but really just anyway on anything. It's a much better experience for lots of other reasons, but specifically for this topic, gestures should just work with no extra effort. But if they will just work with no extra effort, and it's as simple as switching GNOME on X to GNOME on Wayland, why am I including this in a list of big issues? Well, because it's not that simple. Not all desktop environments or window managers support Wayland yet, and OS's popular on laptops like PopOS still don't ship Wayland by default and actually kind of get in the way of enabling it. Plus, although they're often pretty minor now, NVIDIA GPU users are likely to experience more Wayland issues than other people. And it's also just kind of hard to understand for new to Linux users. Like, if you show someone an X session and a Wayland session right next to each other, they're probably not going to see any visual differences other than the cursor sometimes look better in Wayland for reasons I don't quite know yet. Hopefully, the switch away from X entirely should negate that last bit, since people will only have Wayland as an option. But in case you're picking it manually or you're on another distro, if you've got a laptop with a touchscreen or you want to use trackpad gestures, you should probably stick to Wayland, and for other reasons that you can look up. Power consumption. Linux may generally be thought of as more minimal than Windows with less stuff going on, but if you're not taking proper advantage of the sleep states and the power options that the hardware of the laptop provides, you're going to end up using more energy. So be that the hell of dealing with hybrid graphics, not downclocking things when you're not using them, not turning off hardware that you're not using, or even just poor fan control since fans use power and having them on when not, not necessary can cause problems too. There are tons of little and complicated things that Windows or the drivers written for Windows are configured to do by default, but that Linux doesn't. Luckily, there are distros that try to handle that kind of thing for you. PopOS is great for it, if their optimizations even work for you, and if you want to use PopOS or go through the often a hassle of getting their tools working on other distros. Recommending any one fix for everyone would be kind of silly, when people's advice and people's experience on different laptops with different processors and power management things are all just really different. Some people say Fedora is amazing for battery life, and others say it's terrible and you should switch to PopOS, and by the way, you should use TLP. No, don't use TLP, use the power profiles daemon. Ah. I really can't fix everything for you, but I can tell you what I did. Primarily, ignoring the Surface Book 2 specific NVIDIA throttling issue, which I've got a fix for in the Git repo below if you're having that problem, my main focus for power consumption is getting the NVIDIA GPU to sleep correctly. My goal is to have it generally be in D3 cold, and then go up to D0 when I launch a video editor or a GP GPU thing or just a game, and then go immediately back down to D3 cold. The reason that's important is because D3 cold is effectively off, it's not using any power. Where D0, even if the graphics card isn't, or the GPU, isn't doing anything, it's still using 2-4 to four watts of power, which in my testing can bring battery life from just over 7.5 hours of real usage to just under 6.5 hours, so that's a pretty significant difference, that's why I care so much about it. And the first step to fixing it is making sure you have the proprietary drivers installed. That's especially important for me since I'm on a Pascal or 10 series GPU, 
I've got a 1060. However, in the future, if you've got anything higher, a 16 or 20 series or higher, that will eventually not be a problem, since the open source NVIDIA drivers should eventually get full support for those. But for now, everyone should be using the proprietary drivers, and you need the open source ones blacklisted. Then, there's also a power management option for the driver that you're supposed to enable that tells it, yes, you're allowed to sleep the GPU and wake the GPU up. But I have set it, but it doesn't seem to be necessary, since when I don't set it, it still acts the same, so eh, set this option if you want. But remember, everything here will be in the git repo below, since I wanted to write down all the fixes I've done, so don't try and read from screenshots here, just go there and copy and paste things. Anyway, that sounds good, mostly. Solved? No, because by default, your desktop environment is very likely to still choose to render on the NVIDIA GPU, which obviously isn't what we want, since even though the GPU has the capability to sleep, if something's running on it, it's obviously not going to sleep. And to fix that, you could remove the NVIDIA EGL JSON file, which will prevent things from accessing your NVIDIA GPU for Wayland, but so that you can still use other apps for it if you choose to, you're going to set a bunch of environment variables, these ones, which basically tell all apps, no, NVIDIA GPU not allowed, off limits, use something else. And with that, I can now launch GNOME and then go to my terminal, check the power state, and the GPU is still in D3 cold. Then I can run something else with Prime Run, and it will turn on for that, and then when I close it, the GPU goes off again. The problem is that with games, or for the footage itself in a video editor, you're gonna get some really weird tearing. It's not like normal screen tearing, because it's got an unusual shape to it. That's already a known problem though with NVIDIA hybrid graphics on Linux, and you fix it by enabling prime synchronization, which sounds really cool. But what isn't cool is that to enable it, you've got to enable NVIDIA DRM mode setting, and the problem with that is that if I do enable it, the NVIDIA GPU will never go to sleep, it's stuck in D0. The best that I could figure out, and I really did try and make it so it wouldn't be stuck in D0 in that mode, I could not figure it out. The best thing that I could do is use a power management tool that will let me type a command and switch the mode that the GPU's in. There are tools that already exist to do that, the main one being System76 Power, but that does more stuff and takes longer to run. Mine runs instantly and then you can just reboot and it's fine, so that's why I chose to go my own way, but fundamentally it works very, very similarly. The actual modes that I made available are integrated only and compute both of which should have the NVIDIA GPU off normally using no power, but if you're in compute you can do prime run and then an app and it will run on the GPU. The problem is you'll get that screen turn. So then there's full on hybrid mode where the GPU should work perfectly as long as you do prime run, but it will still use 2 to 4 watts of power when doing nothing. It's not perfect, it's not as good as Windows, but it's the best that I could do. Though there is something that I do want to fix eventually, since it seems like it should be possible. Um, with those environment variables set, which by the way came from the Linux Surface Wiki as a recommendation, some apps will just give you a something something EGL renderer failed error. Even if you're in Intel only mode, you can run those apps with prime run or just unset the EGL environment variable thing, and that will fix it. It's just it breaks things. As for the more nebulous stuff, which I've done less research about, so again I won't do any blanket recommendations, but I will tell you what I do. I don't find any complex power management system worth it. I don't use TLP, I just stick with the regular power profiles daemon. And I, keep, I just keep it in balanced, because performance mode doesn't actually seem to increase performance from any benchmarks I've done, all it does is increase idle power draw, and then power saving mode doesn't save any power, it just disables my fans, and, you know, fans consume power, but the fans aren't on by default, normally doing pretty much anything other than video editing or playing a game, the laptop is silent anyway, the fans don't run, and then when the fans do need to kick on, they're not going to kick on if they're in power saving, and so it's just going to cook the CPU, I, I don't like that. So balanced is the only real reasonable option for me. And yeah, I really have tried TLP and Auto CPU Freak, I just haven't had any use for them. As far as something that is maybe not quite deserving to go here, but could be useful, could be relevant, I really like doing server installs and building up from there. And that came from the desktop, because I kind of liked that it was more Arch-like, just more minimal in uh, ideology, but it still let me have the more stable repos of Fedora or Debian. I feel like that could be helpful on a laptop since there will be less background stuff, less system services and just rubbish going on in the background, so 
that could be worth looking into. A little bonus thing, since I haven't had too much experience with it other than Nvidia problems, is that on laptops the drivers tend to be a bit more finicky too. Not because laptop makers use weird versions of the same hardware that's in desktops, like I've never had an Ethernet controller fail just out of the box on a laptop before, but I mean the stuff that's specific to laptops, like IR cameras for Windows Hello, or even just some web built-in webcams in general, or fingerprint sensors and weird media keys. Wi-Fi is notorious for being problem filled on Linux, and I've experienced that myself, though actually not on the laptop, it's been on desktops with Wi-Fi cards. And touchscreens, even though I talked about them before generally being an X issue, what if they use weird drivers? Or what if your laptop has an eGPU, but not because the USB-C port does Thunderbolt, but because it splits in half because the laptop manufacturers are mainly thinking about Windows support? Yes, a Linux driver could probably be written to enable and fix all of those weird edge cases, but generally you're not going to be given anything like that out of the box. Bigger laptop communities, like the Surface, and I think Asus laptops as well, have communities around them that try to bring these features back on Linux, but if you've not got a popular model, Good luck trying to get some of the stuff to work. Now a big one. You know that bug that's normally attributed to Windows Modern Standby, where you shut the lid of your laptop, you come back to it later, the battery's all drained, and it's really, really hot. That did happen on this laptop to me, on the first day of using it on Windows, but it's also happened on Linux, which is confusing if it's Windows Modern Standby, so I thought I should do some investigating. Specifically, I've had the issue pop up on Debian 12, Pop! OS, and yeah, Windows 10 or 11. And it was bad enough that on one day I had my backpack on, it was already like a, a nearly 30 degree day, and I had I took it off because I noticed that my back was a little unusually warm, and I noticed that the laptop was too hot to want to touch, it hurt to touch, and I had to turn it off, the screen was like on but showing black so there was a little bit of light, it was just really weird. And so my assumption, based on that the symptoms are very similar to the Windows Modern Standby problems, is that it's related to S0IX Sleep, the proper name for Windows Modern Standby. But so I could go a bit deeper, I decided to do some checking. The Arch Wiki says this command should reveal whether the laptop's using real S3 deep sleep or S2 idle shallow kind of rubbish sleep. It does return S2 idle, but as you might have noticed, S2 idle is not S0IX, so is it the same thing? Well, you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but as far as I understand it, S2 idle is just a generic name for S0IX. So on Intel, it's S0IX, and then on AMD, it's AMD's thing, but S2 idle is just suspend to idle. It's the kind of sleep that's not really sleep. The actual difference is that with S3, you save some more power, but your laptop turns off lots of hardware and saves what you're doing to RAM, and then has to wake everything back up when you open the lid. Where S2 idle, like the name idle implies, like on but doing nothing, just tries to minimize what the laptop's doing but keeps everything on, which means that when you open the lid it takes a fraction of a second to wake back up exactly where you were. So back to that result then, it says I'm using S2 idle, and Intel's own script says it should support S0IX. So I did some measurements and, well, opening the laptop does take a fraction of a second to wake back up, but over a 29 hour period of the lid being shut but me having Firefox and some notes open, I lost 24% of my battery, which has 75 available watt hours, which means 18 watt hours were lost, which means 0.6 watts of power consumption were, ha were happening over that span of time while the lid was shut. That's pretty impressive. What about S3? Yeah. What about it, Microsoft and Intel? I'm not going to entirely go over everything to do with what's gone on with S3 Sleep, but generally, Intel and Microsoft are killing it off, and lots of modern laptops don't even support it in the BIOS, or UEFI, just like this one. So it won't work on Linux, it won't work on Windows, it won't work on this laptop. Which is pretty frustrating, since, as you might have noticed from this issue being a thing, S2 idle is not perfect, and S3 sleep isn't perfect either, but because it tries to turn the hardware off, your problems are probably going to happen when you open the lid and things don't resume right, which I would prefer to the way S2 fails, where it never sleeps, and so you wake up the laptop and it's nearly dead. Anyway though, the point of this section, yes, it's an S0IX issue. 
Back to the last bit. And yes, I am using the Linux Surface kernel with the patches that should make Linux good on my laptop. My first thoughts about what could be causing the sleep issues were pretty random, because it could be anything stopping the laptop from truly going idle. So my head immediately went to distros. Why was I having this problem when I tested Debian 12 and Pop OS, but not on my conveniently daily driver at least, Fedora server install? Could it be something to do with the different kernels, or like how they're built with the, the different options? Could it be some pre-installed package that's on those Debian, both of those are Debian based distros that isn't on Fedora, I'm not sure. But then I thought, no, Debian and Pop! OS are huge distros, surely they would not have those kind of huge issues out of the box. What piece of hardware keeps causing me problems on my laptop? The Nvidia GPU. And lo and behold, I think that's where the problem lies. Though, for once, I'm not actually gonna blame NVIDIA themselves, I'm gonna kinda split it 40% NVIDIA, 40% Microsoft, and then 20% me. Consistently, the problem seemed to happen when my special NVIDIA driver setup wasn't set up properly. If you don't know how I mess with my NVIDIA drivers, I've talked about it previously in videos, but basically, just a quick summary, the Surface Book 2 throttles the GPU on Linux when it's not plugged into the wall, so I have to modify the NVIDIA drivers so it thinks it's always plugged into the wall, and then I can get full performance on battery. It will still idle normally, like that, that doesn't affect any of the sleep features, but I need to do that for proper performance. And when I was testing Pop! OS and Debian, I, well, other things were going wrong, so I kind of knew that I would end up going back to Fedora, which meant oftentimes, between reinstalls, I wouldn't actually complete my modifications of the NVIDIA driver, and I would have like a, a half-installed one where maybe the uh, kernel driver, kernel module was installed, but not all of the user space packages or backwards, things like that. That was when the issue kept happening, and if I used Nuvo, so... I went through a long period of time where I was trying to find the perfect setup for my laptop, and so the fact that the sleep issues were kind of random, but then also were being caused by the NVIDIA thing, which I was already have, having problems with, just messed up my critical thinking and I couldn't figure out what was going on. But looking back on it, I think that's it, and I think that's why I don't have the problem in my current distro, or any distro that I choose to keep. Given it's seemingly fixed now, and that I think I know what's gone on, but also that it did occur kind of randomly, and so I'm somewhat worried that it will come back, but generally I can just carelessly shut my laptop now, I'd say it was like a medium severity issue. Just like the fact that you haven't seen why I switched video editors. There's another video below if you want a recommendation better than that, and you can join the Discord and Matrix server in the description if you like talking about technology. Hopefully you've enjoyed, subscribe if you'd like to, and bye. Sorry this video was very late, I got back to college and was just exhausted.